the next finalist, number 11, is Luca Raid, and he's pursuing his bachelor degree at Princeton University in complex adaptive systems, and his proposal is called a club-based model of global governance. One of the main bottlenecks in addressing global risks is the disconnect between investments made now and the broadly distributed and non-excludable benefits in the future. So rather than operating here at the level of solutions and ideas, we want to move a layer below to the less visible realm of incentives. If we can align those incentives of the most powerful players, then we can enable solutions to emerge from that. We also have a great opportunities, cities, as we've already heard, cities today produce 80% of global GDP and are responsible for 70% of greenhouse gas emissions. Cities are also more pragmatic than nation states since they deal with more direct problems. And there is a lot of momentum in recent years behind global city cooperation. So first, if we think just about the problem, a natural solution is a club of nations. The way a club works is that there is a membership requirement uh, which is tied to the addressing of a global risk, and there is a uh, tangible, direct, no, um, non-excludable non uh, benefit, uh, and this might be unrelated from the membership requirement, and by combining these, we can connect these two links that I previously described as being disconnected. Uh, so we can implement this on the na national level, and then we can go further and take advantage of our opportunity and also establish city-level clubs. So these are the first two components of the proposed model. Now we can go further and dig into the opportunity and consider the incentive structures of cities and find another opportunity, namely uh, the pressure from private, uh, the private sector, from residents, and from highly skilled mobile labor uh, who increasingly value uh, cities addressing global risks. In the words of Michael Bloomberg, one of the biggest changes in urban governance in this century has been mayor's recognition that promoting private investment requires in a protecting public health. We can harness this using city indices. So an index is simple. It simply ranks cities according to metrics which are tied to addressing global risks. The main way an index works is it provides recognition, both for high achievers and for low achievers. Uh, and if this recognition is tied to a benefit or cost, that has a very big impact. For example, in the private sector, the Access to Medicine Index uh, ranks pharmaceutical companies on how well they improve access to medicine. Uh, since com uh, companies respond to customers and investors who care about this ranking, this has led to improvements in every single company uh, on this uh, ranking. For cities, uh, the comparable stakeholders are residents, the private sector, uh, and um, highly skilled mobile labor. Uh, so that is a way to tie uh, the ranking and the recognition that it provides with a benefit to cities. A quick word on implementation. Uh, since primarily in the first stages we want to get the most powerful players on board uh, in order to enable feasibility, the model will be initially implemented uh, by the G20 and its urban counterpart, the Urban 20, uh, in collaboration with several other existing international city organizations. I should note that the framework is additive to existing institutions who mostly operate at this solution and action level that I previously described, whereas this framework is operating at the incentive level, so it enhances the institutions already existing here. So, those are the three components uh, of the proposed model uh, in a simplified fashion. I want to spend the remainder of my presentation talking about uh, modifications which were not in the original proposal, which I've developed over the past year, uh, particularly related to the club goods for the city level clubs, which is one of the most important and most difficult parts of the framework. Uh, before going into the details, I should note that the benefits ultimately are decided by the clubs. Uh, that's part of the bottom-up nature of the model. However, we can definitely make suggestions for what they might be. Uh, so the most promising route is uh, innovation funds, joint innovation funds, uh, for which there is a precedent in existing uh, international city institutions. 
and in particular, innovation funds related to infrastructure, which is difficult to do. There's many details and technicalities, and different cities have different approaches. So there is strong room for synergy. And in particular, digital and technological infrastructure. Uh, in recent years, there's been a flood of new technologies and social trends. Uh, for example, the Smart City Initiatives combines these, these two. So if we can harness those in the club goods, uh, there's huge scope uh, for synergies there. And in that way, we're also using the club framework to enable cooperation on these sorts of issues. And finally, another possibility uh, for the provision of benefits is that individual cities provide the benefits. So again, we already have many institutions existing at this level of solutions and actions. But if we can move lower and we can align the most powerful political players' incentives towards addressing global risks, then those solutions can emerge from the political players themselves. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you. Thank you very much, Luca. Let's hear from the jury. Uh, Luca, could you explain how um, cities that have larger problems uh, with fewer resources would benefit from the club-based model? So the benefits, uh, the, the uh, power for voting is distributed according to GDP. So in that sense, one might think that uh, it's uh, less beneficial for countries which have less resources. But in the benefits, uh, the benefits are skewed towards countries with less resources uh, who will benefit more. Uh, and another component is that clubs can be set up which are specifically um, tailored to a type of problem that a city has. So for example, there could be a club whose benefit is related to uh, addressing problems in slums. Uh, so of course that would not include every nation, but one of the, uh, sorry, every city or nation, but one of the strengths of the framework is that it's uh, flexible and there can be many clubs which are dedicated to specific issues. Uh, and so in that club, uh, the uh, countries with less resources would be benefiting more. Mm -hmm. If I may yeah. ask uh, on the country's side, um, you're proposing that countries will join a club. Why would they do so when countries are already part of an organization that includes all countries in the world, the United Nations? What are the benefits of uh, what you're proposing and uh, what are some of the challenges? Right, so one of the key uh, strengths of the model is that it's providing actual benefits for being in the club. So it's not uh, it's not a thing where you're joining a club because you want to uh, contribute, that's part of it, but there's also an actual benefit from joining. So one doesn't need to pre-assume that the nations would be committed. That's the strength, that there's this financial incentive uh, to join the club because of the benefit. Um, so I think in that regards, uh, there's not much of a, a challenge in getting countries to join once the club is established. There is a challenge, however, in setting up the club because someone has to provide the benefit at the beginning. And there we do need countries uh, who already have the purpose of wanting to address the global challenges. But I think sufficiently uh, many uh, powerful countries exist who are committed and would we want to join this initial setup of the club. Example on what issue, what kind of club? Can you give us a concrete example? Sure, so climate change is the one that would be uh, best for initially setting up clubs since there's already some organizations which are primitive versions of clubs but don't yet have the membership requirement properly. Um, so for example, the Carbon Neutral Cities Alliance is 20, 20 of the world's largest cities um, who have committed to reduce emissions by 80% within 20 years and they have a multi-million dollar joint innovation fund. Uh, so. Uh, that would be an example where you have a tangible benefit, you have a membership requirement, it would have to be made more concrete than that, uh, and you get a club resulting from that. Um, so climate change is the best place to start, and then I think once that's established, then you can move to the other issues. Okay, jury satisfied? Did they answer? Yes, they are nodding. Another question? No, okay. Thank you, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank